We wish us a Merry Christmas. That's what I'm preaching on today. I mean, you know, we always talk about we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And I tell you, intercession number 35 is not about us. Yeah. It's not about you. You know, that's my number 35 on the whole intercession thing. But you know what? Let's talk about Christmas. And let's wish us a Merry Christmas. Who doesn't like this time of year? Anybody? Children are excited. I mean, it's fun to watch them be excited. I love little kids. They just are like, oh. Mm -hmm. Hope rings in each heart like Christmas bells of the season. Every time you think about it, you can walk by and you see the people uh, ringing the bell for um, Salvation. Salvation Army. It makes me, it makes, makes me think about it. the bells in people's hearts and how excited they get and how they just, oh, you know, because it's Christmas. Yes, mm -hmm. these are hard times for some people. There's depression when there's no money. There's thoughts of one's loss. There's thoughts of love loss. And there is depression. Why not? This is the beginning of the end for the enemy. Mm -hmm. Of course he's going to be bring depression at this time. He's got to be enraged. And it hasn't stopped since the baby was born. He is enraged mm -hmm. that this season is a season where the entire world, no matter the religion, comes together and celebrates the birth of Christ. Can you even imagine how ticked off he must be? Just makes you want to go. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Think you really know the whole story of the birth of Christ? Let's talk about it. In Luke 1, 26 through 38. This is the birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel, sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, the town of Galilee. You know that Gabriel, Gabriel is one of the archangels, correct? Mm -hmm. He's the announcer. Michael is the warrior. And Lucifer was in charge of the worship and praise, of which there is a lot in heaven. But he got cast out, so now we got the two left. It's the only two we know about. There may be more, but we don't know about them. They're not listed, and they're not called archangels. Okay. Mm -hmm. So therefore, two of our virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mm, Jesus. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus, and he will be great and called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary, did you know? She knew. She knew. Did she walk in it? Not any more than we walk in what we know. You know, we walk from time to time, and then the next thing you know, we're walking something else. We walk in faith. And we move forward, and the next thing you know, we're stumbling around with something completely different. And we just knew it last week. We knew it in church. We said amen. We were hollering. We were hooping. We were ready to go. And then when the first time, the enemy goes, did you really know? Like, mm, maybe not. It's easier to not know. I told you about the guy that was in my, one of my Bible studies I was teaching and on intercession. And he came, and, and then all of a sudden he quit showing up. I mean, he came like five times, and then he didn't come anymore in a, in a class of about three months long. And I asked his wife, I said, where is he? And she goes, well, he doesn't want to know anymore. What? He doesn't want to know anymore. You're he found that scripture that says you're responsible to walk in what you know, and he doesn't want to know anymore because he's going to be responsible to walk in, and he's not walking in what he knows now, and he's scared to death. So I tried to explain to him how it worked, but he didn't get the whole grace thing. He, he just couldn't understand it. He didn't want to know anymore until he could perfect the little bit he knew. What a shame. How many of you stumble around? This is interactive. Don't forget. Yeah. You guys are all sitting. How many of you stumble around? Yeah. How many of you try to walk and you try to make it look good and get all perfect and everything, and then you walk out the door and fall on your face? Yeah. I do. I do. Everybody does. Everybody does. And then we pick 
ourselves up because the righteous man falls seven times, but seven times the Lord raises him up. Yeah. Dust your knees up, oh. ask for forgiveness, metanoia, yeah. do a complete turnaround, and you head back to the Lord. That's good. Right? You turn from the fall, yeah. you go back to the Lord. Okay, so keep going. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin? And the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. Do you have a word from God that you feel has failed? Do you have a word from God that you are hoping that it comes to pass? You are hoping above hope that it's going to work? The word of God will never fail. Never. Never. It, the scripture that says that he, when he sends out his word, when it comes back to him, it never goes out void. It always accomplishes what yeah. it's sent to do. Yeah. That's why when we pray on Saturday nights, we pray scriptures. That's why we declare the word of God. His word always accomplishes what it's sent yeah. to do. No failing. No failing. Amen. When you're praying for specific situations, bind that situation to the word of God. Oh, it cannot yeah. fail. If you raise your child in the way they should go, when they are old, they will not depart from it. We bind our children to that word. We bind them to that word and we tell you cannot fail. You cannot backslide. Verse 38. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be to me. To me be fulfilled. And the angel left her. Well, let's tell this story. We all know the story, right? Does anybody not know the story of the birth of Christ? No, we all know. Correct? Mm -hmm. How many times do we know something, and when we know it, and then we go back and look at it, we're not quite sure that we knew it? You know, I told you about the scripture. I was going to teach intercession. I'm quoting this scripture, right? Somebody asked me where it was, and when I looked it up, it wasn't a scripture. It was just two or three scriptures that I sort of put together, and I thought it was a scripture. <laughs> not how it works. <coughs> Let's tell the birth of the story, the story of the birth of Christ. Many people in the world know the story of the birth without ever knowing the reality of the reason for the birth. This is my prayer this season that men would come to know the reality and the finality of truth that the birth brought. So first of all, Mary's engaged. Now this is fun. You know, getting engaged is a hoot. It's just fun. Girls look forward to it. Guys get all puffed up and all because they bought the ring, right? And they're all engaged, and they got the one. <laughs> and it's all, you know, I felt that way. When Mike asked me to marry him, I was like, over the top. You know, I was 59 years old. It wasn't even a 16-year-old thing. Hallelujah. You know, Hallelujah. it's exciting. It's fun. She's apparently noticed by God because of her nature and her kindness and her purity of heart. She know, we know that she has to be loyal and faithful because the scripture of Proverbs 3, 3 through 4, 